Dr. Harvey Cushing, the father of neurosurgery. Harvey Cushing was born on April 8, 1869 in Cleveland, Ohio. He was the youngest of 10 children. Harvey Cushing was born into a family with a history of medical practitioners who were all well-educated and accomplished doctors of their eras. Harvey Cushing's parents were Betsy Williams and Henry Cushing, a physician himself whose ancestors were Puritans that came to Hingham, Massachusetts during the 17th century. Harvey Cushing's education began at the Cleveland Manual Training School, which played a pivotal role in the early establishment of Cushing's interests in science and medicine. The school emphasized experimental training and a physics-focused approach to education, which contributed to Cushing's interests in joining the medical field specifically. The school also had a manual dexterity training program that set the stage for Cushing's future success as a surgeon. Next, Cushing attended Yale University where he received his Bachelor of Arts in 1891. He then went on to Harvard for medical school, earning his medical degree four years later in 1895. After medical school, Harvey Cushing traveled to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore for a residency in surgery. There he worked under several accomplished physicians, one important one being Dr. William Stewart Halstead. Dr. Halstead is well known for his emphasis on the use of strict aseptic surgical procedures. He was also an early supporter of anesthetics. He also is known for introducing several new operations, for example, the mastectomy for breast cancer. During his time at John Hop Johns Hopkins, Dr. Cushing was also mentored directly by Dr. William Osler, who he became extremely close with. Dr. Osler was one of the world's most renowned physicians who became like a father figure to Cushing. To honor his favored mentor's work, Dr. Cushing wrote an extensive two-volume biography titled The Life of William Osler that was published in 1925, for which Cushing won a Pulitzer Prize. Osler and Cushing are documented to have had much in common. They were both notorious workaholics and were tremendously committed to the efficacy of science and science-based medicine. However, their colleagues also reported that they had several major differences. Cushing was known for being harsh and critical with mentees, colleagues, and even in his own personal life with his wife and five children. He was known for being self-centered and even arrogant. Contrastingly, Osler's demeanor was described as far more humble. Cushing also worked with several other notable scientists at the time, including Theodore Coker in Germany, who he produced several writings with on intracerebral pressure. Also, Victor Horsley in England. Dr. Horsley was a pioneer of many surgical techniques, including surgery for epilepsy, cranial techniques for tumors of the pituitary gland, and spinal cord tumors. Although Cushing's surgical style was noted to differ somewhat greatly from Dr. Horsley's, he nonetheless acknowledged Dr. Horsley as one of the great fathers of surgery who influenced Cushing's own work in this field. Another mentor of Dr. Cushing was Sir Charles Scott Sherrington in England. While working with Dr. Sherrington, Cushing first encountered the Cushing reflex, which describes the relationship between blood pressure and intracranial pressure. And together, Sherrington and Cushing contributed to the localization of, the, of cerebral centers. Overall, the culmination of Dr. Cushing's experiences with these prominent individuals in the field greatly shaped his own future career in surgery and medicine. While Dr. Cushing reaped the benefits of having several prominent mentors, his success can also be attributed to his own internal drive, determination, and passion for science and medicine, which is nicely evidenced by this quote of his. The capacity of man himself is only revealed when, under stress and responsibility, 
he breaks through his educational shell, and he may then be a splendid surprise to himself, no less than to his teachers. After receiving his medical degree from Harvard and traveling abroad to be trained by and work with some of the world's most influential physicians, Dr. Cushing returned to Baltimore in 1901 at the age of 32 and was made Associate Professor of Surgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital. He was placed in full charge of cases of surgery of the central nervous system. In 1902, Cushing married his childhood sweetheart, Catherine Stone Crowell. They had five children together. In 1911, Dr. Cushing returned to Boston and became Professor of Surgery at Harvard and Chief of Surgery at the newly opened Peter Bent Brigham Hospital, where he remained until 1932. Dr. Cushing's interests and professional pursuits extended beyond surgical techniques and also included a fascination with human growth, which led to his seminal contributions to the field of endocrinology, such as his book titled The Pituitary Gland and Its Disorders and later his discovery of Cushing's syndrome, for which he is probably most well known today. Cushing's syndrome, sometimes called hypercortisolism, is a disease that occurs when an individual's body is exposed to high levels of the hormone cortisol for a long period of time. In 1917, Dr. Cushing was commissioned as a major in the U.S. Army Medical Corps and became the director of the U.S. base hospital attached to the British Expeditionary Force in France. Cushing also served as the head of a surgical unit in a French military hospital outside of Paris. During his time at the French military hospital, Cushing experimented with the use of electromagnets to extract fragments of metallic missile shrapnel that were lodged severely within the brain. In 1918, Dr. Cushing was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel and was assigned as Senior Consultant in Neurological Surgery for the American Expeditionary Forces in Europe. During Dr. Cushing's service, he treated Dr. Osler's son, Lieutenant Edward Osler, who had been fatally wounded during combat. Cushing was discharged and returned to the U.S. in 1919. In 1923, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal by the U.S. Army. Dr. Cushing held several important professional memberships during his career, including the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, Fellow of the Royal Society of London, and President of the History of Science Society in 1934. Dr. Cushing's major contributions to the field of science and medicine were many. Dr. Cushing conducted over 2,000 brain surgeries with his colleagues, which led to tremendous advances in neurosurgical techniques, including improved survival rates of patients after difficult brain operations for intracranial tumors, using x-rays to diagnose brain tumors, and using electrical stimulation to study the human cortex. Dr. Cushing also helped develop several surgical tools. He developed the Cushing forceps, an instrument that is used to grasp the thick tissues of the scalp during cranial surgery, and a surgical magnet that he developed while working with the Harvard Medical Unit in France during World War I to extract shrapnel from the heads of wounded soldiers. And one of his most notable contributions to surgical tools was the sphygmomanometer, originally invented by Samuel Siegfried von Bosch in 1881, then modified in 1896 by Dr. Riva Rocci, an Italian physician. And finally, in 1901, Cushing brought an example of Riva Rocci's device to the U.S. and popularized it in the medical community there. Lastly, Dr. Cushing was one of the world's leading teachers of neurosurgery during the first few decades of the 20th century, as well as a prolific writer publishing over 300 articles and 13 books during his career. These publications have contributed to a variety of topics within medicine, including understanding the dynamics of intracranial pressure, the development of the pathological classification of glioma, 
and the importance of blood pressure regulation during surgery, an idea, an idea that provided the foundation for modern day, day anesthesia recording. Dr. Cushing also contributed to the use of cortical stimulation to localize function. A research study done by Pendleton and colleagues in 2012 reviewed 41 of Cushing's patients from Johns Hopkins Hospital who presented with epilepsy, tumors, or head trauma and were undergoing intracranial stimulation. A few examples of Cushing's mappings of individual patients' motor cortices are pictured on this slide. Sadly, on October 7, 1939, at the age of 70, Dr. Harvey Cushing died from a cyst in the third ventricle of his brain. However, his contributions to the field of neuroscience were vast and influential, and they live on through modern-day neurosurgical and medical practice, and through the continued growth of scientific discovery in the field of neuroscience, which Dr. Cushing was so passionate about throughout his career.